Hey everyone, this is Colin Moshman here to give you a tutorial on how to use my personal favorite poker software, ICMizer 3. Now this is a program designed to give you accurate ranges for the mid and late stages of poker tournaments, including any type of Sunningo, MTTSNG, or multi-table tournament. ICMizer 3 tells us what hands to shove or fold pre-flop, including if we're first in, facing a prior all-in, or even if someone has raised or limped before us. And it has a lot of other cool features too that we're going to show you in this video. And let's begin with one of these key features, which is the push fold chart for all 169 different starting hands. These charts are made using all relevant factors like everybody's position, everyone's stack size, and even something as detailed as the exact size of the ante. So you can find plenty of static and free push fold charts out there and they're not going to take these factors into account. So in some cases they can even be harmful to your game because they give you a false sense of accuracy. These charts are the real deal and I want to talk about what they mean. Let's take a look here at the ace six offsuit inside of the box. It says 0 0.28. So we're going to get more into the different possible settings very soon, but for now the one I've chosen is the number of dollars that you win or lose relative to folding. Okay, so here this is a $15 18 man Sinigo with a $250 prize pool. So this means that shoving the A6 offsuit wins us 28 cents, and this is going to be an equity difference, an EV difference. So relative to folding, we can shove this A6 offsuit and win 28 cents. Similarly, if we move to the right relative to folding, we could shove the Jack 6 offsuit and that would lose us 20 cents. And so we get the exact EV difference for shoving the different possible starting hands. Another thing we have is 50%. So we're supposed to shove the top 50% here, and this is going to be a Nash equilibrium range. And what this means is that these are ranges you can't improve on unless your opponents are making mistakes and you know what those mistakes are. If all those conditions are happening, then great, and we'll see how ICMizer 3 lets us adjust in any way we want based on those kinds of reads. But otherwise, we're going to have the best results by following these Nash equilibrium ranges that ICMizer gives us by default. So, the question we want to talk about now is how exactly do you learn winning tournament poker strategy with ICMizer 3? And there's going to be a two-step process. So the first step is going to be to set up the hand history. This includes all parameters like stacks and actions, and we'll show soon the best ways to do this manually or loading from a hand history. And then you also select the tournament structure and type of analysis you want, and then you click this nice green ICMIS button and get results. So how do you put in the tournament structure you want? In order to do that, you're going to click in the upper left here and the most popular Sunigo MTTSNG and even standard MTT tournament types are already preset for you. So for example, within the PokerStars section, we see the all new Grand Tour Furmax Hyper, uh, 5050, Satellites, Sunday Million, uh, 27 Man. So they're all gonna be there for you. And if for any reason you want something that isn't already there, you can go ahead and create a new structure, which is going to be a particularly important feature for MTT players. So I'll show you how to do that. And let's say that I'm going to create a home game. I'll call it the Moshman Invite, very original name. It's going to be an MTT structure. I love hypers. Uh, it's going to be a poker store's home game. It won't be a knockout or progressive. And you can specify the payouts as percentages or dollars. Let's do dollars. Uh, I'm going to make some nice baller payouts for mine. So 14,000 for second, 7,200, 2,800. So whatever they are, you go ahead, you fill these in and you create. And then because this is an MTT custom structure, it's going to show up here. Moshman Invite Hyper Turbo. You can select that and it's always going to be there for you. So that's how you select the tournament structure you want as well as create new tournament types. You'll also notice there are these very handy icons for quick identification. Red fittingly means Hyper. Orange is going to be Turbo. Green, Normal Speed. 
uh, pink, purple, maybe that's fuchsia, I don't know. That's gonna mean progressive knockout, and this pretty blue is going to be a knockout structure. So that helps you quickly select the one you want. And they're going to be two fundamentally different ways to calculate, which are gonna be using ICM as well as chip EV. So first, my recommendation is to use ICM dollar EV for my kind of ridiculous Moshman invite structure. It's generated a $49,000 prize pool. But the way you're gonna come up with these is you're going to take the prize pool and multiply that by the number of players. So in the example of a $15.18 man, the breakdown is $13.89 toward the prize pool, and the remaining dollar and 11 cents is rake. So we exclude the rake, we'll multiply the $13.89 by the 18 players to get a $250 prize pool. And let's switch back now in MTT SNG to the 18 man nine max turbo and select $250 again as the prize pool. And so once we have done that, we click ICMIs and we get the results we've already looked at as 28 cents EV difference for shoving. Next thing we can do is we can do this ICM percent EV. And if we do it now, these are gonna be percents of the total prize pool. So this is going to be the percent of the $250 prize pool that you win or lose by making a particular shove. And what this allows us to do is compare different buy-ins. You can compare across buy-ins. So if you say, hey, I'm gonna win you know, 23 cents by shoving this hand, that's gonna change if you move up or down in stakes, whereas this percent is not going to change. Okay, it's going to be the same you know, assuming everything else stays the same, whether you move up or down and buy-in. So while I love using cold, hard dollars, if you do want to compare across buy-ins, ICM percent EV is a great way to do that. You can also use chip EV, and this means how many chips you win or lose. The strategy when you're playing a winner-take-all game, which chip EV represents, changes. So you're going to get a different range when you do this, and it's gonna show that in chip EV, we win 474 chips in EV by shoving the ace six offsuit. And in order to say how good or bad is that, you often wanna consider in terms of big blinds. So for example, if the big blind here was 50,000, then this 474 chip gain would be very small, it'd be something close to break even. Whereas if the big blind is 80, then we win close to six big blinds, which is a tremendous gain. So in order to factor that in, you can do chip BB EV, which just says how many big blinds am I winning or losing when it comes to chips. So here at an 800 big blind or 475-ish chip gain corresponds to plus 0.59 big blinds. And those are gonna be the different options you have. Again, my recommendation is to generally stick, at least at the start, with ICM dollar EV prize pool. Okay, so how do you actually set up these hands? And one way is manual, so you can put in all the parameters yourself, which we'll look at more soon. And the other way is with paste hand history and auto analyze hands. So what I have right now is I have copied to the clipboard a hand history where I have Jack-9 offsuit later in this game. I don't know if I'm supposed to call it off or not, so I'm gonna have ICMizer 3 tell us. And to do that, all I do is click Paste Hand History, and it's instantly going to show up and give us a result. It says, no, don't make this call, you're going to lose money. And so this is a very nice way to automatically pull up a given hand history. A lot of the time though, you instead wanna pull up a full game and this brings us to auto analysis. So the automatic analysis feature is one of the absolute most important features of ICMizer 3. And what's gonna happen is you put in a complete hand history, so every hand of the tournament, and ICMizer quickly looks through all your hands in the tournament focuses just on the ones meant for pre-flop shove fold call analysis, calculates the Nash equilibrium ranges, watches how you played, and shows all the errors 
pointing out the most expensive ones. So this is a lot of fun, and in my opinion, it is the most efficient way to find potential mistakes and plug your tournament poker leaks. So we can do this for both Sit and Go or MTT. Let's go ahead and do this first with Sit and Go. So the way I want to do this is I want to click here. We're going to look at a nine-man Sit and Go. So we're going to scroll back up. I think I actually have it as one of my favorite structures, a nine max turbo. So I'll do that. And this is also going to be a $15 game. So we'll say $125 ICM dollar EV prize pool. And then we click on auto analyze hands. And I already have the game loaded up. So here it is. And shows up poker stores nine man turbo ICM dollar EV and then we click to load and it does that and when it does we see the result of the auto analysis in the left and what it says is that this biggest potential mistake is the top one okay so the biggest mistakes are going to be highlighted the most let's go ahead uh, let's click on it and check that out so the red f means that i folded and this is being flagged as potentially a significant mistake. And here we see that, in fact, it is a, a very significant mistake. Here with a nine blind stack, I should shove the King Jack offsuit. I can win 48 cents by doing that, which is very significant in a $15 game. And folding is going to be a big mistake. And so it's really important that I see this highlighted because depending on my level of knowledge, you know, maybe I don't know this is a profitable shove, in which case I need to know that right away. Or maybe I'm seeing like, hey, I'm playing too many tables and this is an unacceptable misclick. But either way, I am instantly seeing the most important hands from the sit and go with the auto analysis feature. And you can go ahead and look at the remaining ones as well. We can also do the same thing for MTT, and I want to go ahead and show you that next. So in order to do that, let's take a look at an MTT. In fact, I'll pull up an MTT SNG, a $2.50 180 man. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to again go up here, and the 250 180 man, we're going to have a $410 prize pool. And at that point, what we're going to do is select the 180 man, and that should be an MTT SNG. So always start there with what general format it is. And here it's an example of an MTT SNG. And we see 180 man 9 max turbo. So I'm going to go ahead and click on there. Uh, go ahead and put this back in. And then when we do auto analyze hands, we're going to get a chance to check on it and make sure that we've selected things correctly. So I have copied the hand history and I'll go ahead and paste that here. It instantly pulls up how many hands are involved in this, 110 hands. Poker Stars 180 man, nine max turbo, ICM, dollar EV. And now we wanna check MTT mode, which I'm going to do here. And we'll say that there are 180 players, 100, uh, pardon me, 1500 starting stack and 270,000 chips in play. So we've got everything loaded up correctly. I'm going to click load them, and now we're going to have another auto analysis. And while you saw that, this is super fast, but if it's still loading, you can already begin clicking on them. Uh, last time we looked at the biggest mistake, let's go ahead just for fun and click on, on this one and see what this small potential mistake is going to represent. So if I go ahead and I click here, it appears to be what this is saying is that somebody has basically made a non all in all in for three blinds. We're getting better than two to one pot odds and we can call with almost anything. So we have a slight plus EV call with this five deuce offsuit and we can go ahead and even in this full MTT SNG or larger MTTs, use the MTT mode auto analysis to find out the biggest mistakes that we are making in this game. We saw how quickly 
as uh, a side point, I want to mention this. It pulled up these hands and auto analyzed them. And generally, you get very high performance with ICMizer. And the reason for that is because all ICMizer 3 calculations are performed in the cloud, which prevents your PC from freezing and keeps system requirements minimal. ICMizer has powerful servers that are always working for you when you're using the program to study. So you see right now this empty T mode is selected. I want to talk more about that in a second. But first, one thing that's very important is going to be adjusting the players and the blinds. And what I want to do here is I want to consider for a second a hyper turbo situation. So let's go ahead and get in a little bit of practice. And we'll do this as ICM percent EV, so it'll be applicable across different buy-ins. And I'm going to go to normal sitting goes. And I want to look at a six max hyperstructure. So we'll go ahead and select that. And when we do that, so we don't want MTT mode on, we're going to say that there are three players left. We have the six max hyper. And let's say that everybody has 500 starting stacks. So three players left. They all have a thousand in chips. And we'll put in a blind here of 210. And we're going to consider what hands to shove when we're the small blind. And what we can do is we can use future game simulation. And what this means is we take into account the future increase of the blinds. And this is going to be really important, particularly at final tables and sitting goes. And most important when stacks are short like in hyper turbos because we don't want to get blinded out and ICMizer can incorporate that into the math of its decisions. So what you do here is look at this FGS which stands for future game simulation and it's going to show a check mark by the one it recommends so you can always just go to where the check mark is and then you click ICMize and it's going to give you the range is based on the future game simulation. So it's going to factor in that you don't want to get blinded out, that you want to make the best possible decision given that. And that's how you use FGS, which again is most important for hypers and short stack situations. We saw how to modify the number of players left when you're doing this kind of manual analysis. And you also want to point out that you can create custom blind sizes. So let's say that you're interested in what if the blinds are actually five big blinds and there's an even larger ante, so 20% ante. I can put in 100 and 200 blinds with a 40 ante and see how that's going to modify the ranges here. So again, that is adjusting the number of players left, the blinds, including custom blind sizes, as well as FGS future game simulation. So having said that, I want to go back, like I said, to this MTT mode. I'm going to click out of this and I'll go back to this five deuce offsuit hand. We're back in MTT mode and we have this same 180 man nine max turbo structure with a 410 prize pool. And MTT mode is only needed when there's more than one table playing. So MTT mode is going to perform ICM calculations even before the final table in regular MTTs where you can have up to 500 players remaining or even up to 2,500 players remaining for progressive knockout MTTs instead of the alternative, which is the much less precise chip EV calculations. So we recommend to always use MTT mode when that's an option. And so what it's going to do is ICMizer 3 will estimate based on all the information it has, the number of players remaining, it knows the total chips. And so based on that, we get an average stack. And you can do this in a couple of ways. One way is manually. So maybe you happen to know how many other players there are and their exact stats, uh, stacks that is, so you can modify these. Or you can just have the program automatically generate everyone's uh, chip stack and come up with an excellent approximation for that. And so this is going to be MTT mode, which is using ICM when there are multiple tables left. And again, this is a much more accurate way 
of doing ICM and shove fold calculations for your MTT SNG and MTT games. So one thing we haven't talked about too much though is progressive knockouts, which are of course an increasingly popular type of knockout tournament. And ICM ISO 3 is gonna let you analyze hands from progressive knockout tournaments using ICM or future game simulation with their own proprietary true bounty model, which you can only find with ICMizer. So the chip EV bounty model is very fast and can handle more players, but true bounty model supports up to 100 players. It does a Monte Carlo simulation and it gives you significantly more accurate results. So this is absolutely going to be the best way to go. And I wanna show you guys how to import for progressive knockout and look at MTT mode and auto analysis in the progressive knockout structure. So in order to do that, let's take a look at a 90 man. And the 90 man progressive knockouts are awesome because as we saw, True Bounty can analyze up to 100 players. So it's going to incorporate accurate ranges using ICM and the bounties from the very start. So to do that, we're going to go to PokerStars MTT SNG, and we're going to do a $5.90 man, nine max turbo. Again, you can do this with any structure you want, custom ones, uh, large field MTTs that are also progressive knockout. And ICM ISO 3 has already put in for us the correct prize pool for a $5.90 man. So we have this selected and we're going to do auto analyze hands. I'm going to paste this in. And again, we wanna do this last check. So $5.90 man, nine max turbo, ICM dollar EV. We'll keep FGS as auto. We wanna select MTT mode and it's showing up 90 players, 1500 starting stack, 135,000 total chips, all correct. And we have 152 hands as part of this game. So let's go ahead and click to load them. So now we can look at any of these hands that are showing up with the auto analysis. Uh, let's just take a look here as an example. So with this King Tensu, this is being flagged as a mistake. We see that Hero has folded. The program recommends shoving. I completely agree with that. Suited Broadway hands are awesome open shove candidates and I would be jamming this hand. So the program ICMizer 3 has correctly identified this hand as a mistake. Things that we'll notice when we look at the ICMizer tab is that we have not just everyone's stacks, but their bounties that have been pulled directly from the hand histories and show up conveniently right here on this replayer section. Then on the right hand side, we see that it's MTT mode and we have the number of players left, average stack, total chips, as well as the progressive knockout stats using this awesome true bounty model. Uh, you can click there, find out more about it right inside of the software. So now not only can we modify everybody's chips, but their bounties. And let's say, you know, usually you're not going to know that information for every table, but maybe you do, or maybe you're curious about a specific situation. You can go ahead and put that in with as much accuracy as you want. Um, the remaining chip stacks and bounties. So this is going to be how we use MTT mode for progressive knockouts. And we're going to get these nice ranges that tell us exactly what hands to shove or fold, incorporating the fact that there's ICM and what the exact bounties are in this progressive knockout. So another thing we can do while we have this up, let's go ahead and exit this, is we can take the perspective of a different player. So normally if we are the small blind in the spot, we can shove with a very wide range, but usually we're not going to be correct to shove junk. And here the small blind is correct to shove any two cards. And the reason for that is because when his opponent folds, the big blind folds, he gains equally much, but when his opponent calls, he's now eligible to win that bounty. So if you did not have a progressive knockout analysis and an accurate bounty model, then you're going to miss out on spots where the bounty math significantly changes the shove fold call ranges that you wanna use. Okay, so with that said, I wanna take a look at a couple of other 
important features and things that we can do with this program. And so let's look again at a nine man sit and go example. And in order to do that, I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to say, let's look at a nine max turbo. We'll put in the same $125 in prize pool. And we're going to now modify using the player action and range editor. So in any time we're using a sit and go or a final table, I should say not sit and go, but single table tournament sit and go, we're going to make sure that we don't have MTT mode checked. We're going to use the exact structure that we want. And so what I want to do is I want to switch it so that there are four players. This is going to be the bubble of a nine man. We'll go ahead and put in four equal stacks. And the first thing that you can do is you can edit player actions. So one thing that we can do is we have this player in the cutoff has folded. Well, we can have him do anything we want. So for example, he can limp, he can min raise, or we can have it that he has shoved here. So if he's shoved, we can now click ICMIs, and we're going to get our correct calling range. So that's the player action editor. And the other thing you can do is the range editor. So you can change the Nash ranges and instead you can have them reflect that certain players are going to be looser or tighter and you can recalculate the optimal response for yourself and other players. So let's take a look at an example of that. Okay, so here we have that this player is shoved. I actually want to make it so that the blinds are a little bit shallower. Okay, so the cutoff is shoved and we'll be making a significant mistake, an $8.53 mistake. Pretty huge one to call here with this King 10 suited. So what we can do is we can say, well, what happens if instead of this Nash 27%, this player has a different range? So maybe we know that he's very tight. And to reflect that, I'm going to right click here on this range and I'm going to make it so that he's shoving even fewer hands. And so instead of 27%, now I think he's only shoving about 17%. So this is going to be a locked range. And we expect that now we have to call off even tighter than our initial 3.8%. And so in order to recalculate the optimal response, the best response range, I'm going to left click here. And so what these indicate, this orange lock means that this is going to be a locked range that we have changed from the Nash equilibrium range. The green check mark means this is our best response range. And so we're now correct to call even tighter. And the big blind, any other remaining players, um, their ranges are going to change as well as a result of differing from the Nash range to the locked range. Uh, so this is going to be very useful. And like I said, you do want to generally stick with the Nash ranges, but some of the time you know that a maniac is shoving very wide, a very tight player is shoving very few hands, and you can accurately account for that with ICMizer 3 um, by right-clicking, selecting the exact range you want. So here we're going the other direction now. Uh, this guy is a complete maniac. He's out of control. What is our best response range now? We expect it to widen, and sure enough, it has from three point something to over 7% of hands. So now I wanna take a look at types of situations that we can solve for in ICMizer 3. So let's go back to the player action editor. This player has folded. When everyone's folded to us, we're gonna be looking at our open shove range. So I'll go ahead and click here. And when we do that, we see that we're supposed to shove any two cards because it's the bubble and we can pressure our opponent. We can also look, as we saw, facing one all in. So now it's going to generate our calling range. Uh, we'll go ahead and unlock it and go back to the initial ones. And we can also do facing two all in. So let's say, for example, that this player has shoved and this player has also moved all in. 
And so here we have a shoving range, a push range, a call range, and then these are going to be O for overcall. So this is going to be an overcall range. So ICMizer 3 is saying that if the player in the cutoff moves all in, the button calls, then we should overcall with only pocket aces because of the fact that the button's range is supposed to be very tight. There's a tremendous ICM penalty. We can fold and be guaranteed to finish in the money. And so we should be extremely tight here and only go ahead and overcall with the pocket aces. And one small thing I also want to mention here is that let's say that we ignore this player again for a second. In other words, this player has folded. And let's say then instead of four equal stacks, we cover the initial shover. So we're going to take 100 chips from a stack. Hopefully he won't mind too much there. He moves all in. And so what I want to point out is that it says hero call. But call is also push. This just means the second all in. So this means that this player is pushing 3275. Uh, then we then push. So that is what hero call means in this context. Now, the other thing that we can do, which is really cool, is other VPIP voluntarily put in pot ranges. So we'll go back just because it looks a little nicer to four equal stacks. And we might say, what if this guy doesn't shove, but he does something else? And we can have him take any action. So we can have him limp. And we say, what hands do we shove over a limp? And we get an answer. We should shove 17% of hands over a limp. This is a Nash equilibrium shoving range over an opponent's limp. Instead, maybe he's going to min raise. So a lot of people are looking to put in uh, small exploitive min raises here. So let's say that our opponent has put in a raise to 600. And what range of hands should we three bet shove? So I can click ICMIs. And we're going to get that we should shove a range of 15%. So this guy raises to 600. We move all in with the top 15% of hands, uh, which are going to be these, these hands. And here it's selecting ones that have blockers as well as good equity against his calling range. Now, one thing that we can do here as well is to use ranges that we provide. Okay, so we think maybe he's actually not going to be initially raising with 16%. This is a player that we know is always trying to pwn bubbles and get away with a lot of funny business. So we're going to say, look, I think he's actually raising here more like 43% of hands. And this is going to be a locked range. Now we also need to know what is his calling range. So if he opens 43%, and we think that, you know what, he's going to call not super wide, but wider than this 4%. Let's go ahead and make it that he calls with 8%. And based on these two locked ranges, what is our best response range? So these have been right-clicking on these to get the, uh, the locked range. I've right-clicked, and now I'm going to left-click on Hero's Range. And look at this. This is an any two card shoving range. And all this is saying is that if our opponent is really opening over 40% and calling with 8%, that means that basically if we jam around 80% of the time, he's going to fold to us. And we can show a profit jamming any two cards. So this is going to be a really important kind of analysis when we have specific reads like that. So just as a quick summary of this, what we have here is if we go back, we can click ICMIs, we're going to have these very common ranges, which are just going to be open shove ranges facing a prior all in. We now have a call range um, facing two prior all ins. We're now going to get these O's, which are going to be over call ranges. And we can also lock ranges by right clicking and saying, hey, we're overriding the Nash equilibrium. This is what we think our opponent is going to actually be shoving. Uh, best response range, which is going to be here with the green check mark. And so these are all going to be very important types of ranges to generate, um, with the last one being when we have other VPIP types, such as an opponent who has called the big blind or made some kind of a smaller raise. So for example, we looked at a min raise, 
This would be a 2.5 x-rays. And so all of these are going to be types of analysis that we can do using ICMISER 3. One thing, by the way, that we haven't talked about yet is you see these orange figures. They say 1.9, and what those are are bubble factors. So whenever you perform a NASH calculation, you're going to see differently colored circles next to each opponent, and that indicates their bubble factor against you. The bigger this bubble factor, the more pressure you're putting on the opponent, meaning they're going to need more equity to call your pushes. So again, the higher the bubble factor, the more you can pressure your opponent, which is going to be a really important part of late game exploiting risk aversion, big stack strategy. Now what I want to do is talk a little bit about how ICMISER 3 works behind the scenes. So in order to do that, we can keep with this same example. Let's do it from the perspective of the player in the big blind. So I'm just going to click on the big blind here when he's facing a fold and shove. Let's say he has a hand here such as ace nine and deciding whether or not to call. And what ICMISER 3 is going to do is an expected value calculation and we can get inside that calculation. I'm going to show you how. So to do that we're going to do ace nine offsuit detailed result. And one thing it shows which is really cool is the bust probability. The bust probability means that if we call here, we're going to bust this tournament 37.9% of the time. So what that means is that our opponent is supposed to be shoving any two cards against us. We are going to do well against a range of any two cards. So that means over 60% of the time we're going to win, but the remainder of the time, which comes out to around 38%, we're going to bust. So this is a cool thing that's automatically displayed. Now, if we fold to his shove, then we can calculate using the ICM model what our equity is in this tournament. And so the program does it and says we have $29.30 in equity. If we call, then we need to do an expected value calculation. Okay, so Close to 60% of the time we're going to win. In that case, our equity goes up to $48. We have the small tie component. And 37.9% of the time, uh, the small blind is going to get there. He's going to win. And in that case, we're going to boss and we're going to have $0 in equity. So you combine these factors together with an expected value calculation. And you get that our equity on balance from calling is $29.40. This is higher than the $29.30 that we have from folding. And what we therefore expect is that it is a profitable call with the ACE 9 offsuit, exactly as ICMISER 3 displays. So the next feature I want to talk about is the hand EV and range charts. And these are going to allow us to visually identify the exact correlation between your push fold decision and your opponent's range. So you can generate charts to evaluate how profitable the full set of decisions is for the situation you're analyzing. And I think that's going to be easier to explain by looking at an example. You can do that here actually right in this by clicking on range or hand EV charts. It also shows up here as the charts button. So I'll go ahead and do that. And here's the first one, which is the hand EV chart. So what this says is how profitable is this call as a function of how wide he's shoving. So if the small blind is shoving with a range of any two cards, we're going to show a little profit here. But let's say he's shoving a very tight range. That instead of the Nash range, he's only shoving with a very narrow range. In that case, we're going to be losing a lot of money. And so what this does is it shows us how much money we gain or lose based on how wide our opponent is shoving. And so here, if we think that, you know what, there's a good chance he's not actually shoving any two cards, he's on a tighter range, then this can cause us to make a correct fold based on that read. We can also look at the range chart. So here we can say, Let's fix, for example, this lighter green color, which says, hey, we don't need any particular edge here. Let's say they were willing to take any edge whatsoever. So if the small blind is going to shove 
with this range, then what range should we call them with, okay? So here it says opponent range is close to top 50%. And based on that, we have hero's range, which is going to be 6.64%. Okay, so now he's shoving much tighter than any two cards, and we're only supposed to call him with a range of approximately pocket nines, ace ten suited, and ace jack offsuit. So these are really nice ways to visually examine how wide you should be shoving or calling um, based on what you think your opponent might actually be doing. Another thing I want to quickly show you guys is going to be the multi-hand tool. And so to do that, what we can do is we can examine something that is different without opening a new instance of ICMizer. So here I'm going to left click on new and I'm gonna come up with some new situation. So now we're looking at a 50-50 in chip BBEV. That probably wouldn't be the best way to do that. Uh, but just to illustrate the multi-hand tool, the different number of players, a different blind level, we're doing this analysis and then we want to go back to the game we previously pulled up for auto analysis. So you can toggle between these, again, without needing a new instance of ICMizer. So this is very convenient. And anytime you're done, maybe this is now distracting, we go ahead, exit out of that, and go back to this initial game we're using for review. So having said that, I want to talk about the pro subscription features and they're gonna be two very cool pro subscription features. The first one is Sit and Go Coach. And this allows you to practice shove fold decisions without any financial risk by playing out the late stages of the tournament or Sit and Go in tutorial mode, honing your skills through late game simulations. The push fold personal Sit and Go Coach is gonna clearly expose weak points that still need improvement. So to do that, we'll go to Sit and Go Coach and what you wanna do is select the tournament type that you wanna practice, okay? So I'll click PokerStars Nine Man Turbo. You can select specific spots to quiz yourself on, such as when you're mid-stacked with a certain number of players left, or you can just do all spots. And then a situation is gonna come up, okay? So we have eight, seven offsuit. Do we shove or fold here? So I'll say we fold, fold, fold and fold. It's going to be embarrassing if I get a lot of these wrong. Unfortunately, we get four out of four correct. Uh, then we can move on to the next question. And these are going to adjust to how you're doing. So this is going to be a very good way of practicing. And these are available for all kinds of structures. So we go ahead and go back here. And one example of that is if we continue scrolling, so you see 45 uh, 45 man 9 max turbo and we're also going to see this Grand Tour 4 max hyper and Grand Tour tournaments on stars is the new poker format they're four way fast paced progressive knockout tournaments with large blinds majority of hands are going to be played at the push fold stage with no classic prize pool so very valuable to be able to practice on a new format like that lastly you can use Sin and Go Coach on the mobile app as well now, another thing I want to look at is replayer. So if we have a hand like this, uh, this King-10 suited, we can also click to replay. And here it is. So replayer is a handy tool for replaying hands with the ability to jump over to the ICMizer preflop calculator and instantly analyze the hand you're looking at. Okay, so here I'm looking at in replayer. You see a fold. I can go ahead and click ICMize and go up and back between the two. And this is going to allow you also to monitor pot odds, uh, equities, the winning odds are gonna change on every street. And it's also just a very nice interface. It's by far my favorite one that I have used for replaying that also works seamlessly with progressive knockout. As far as I know, there is no other replayer on the market currently that can handle progressive knockout. And here these are gonna show up immediately with with what you're doing. Um, you're not gonna have to look back in the hand history to find out what the bounties are. So that's an extremely valuable feature. So here we can look at that. We can go to the next one. They're color-coded based on if you've uh, won money, lost money. 
and replay complete hands that way. So that's the last feature we want to look at, and let's now go ahead and summarize what we've learned. And when you use ICMizer 3, the most important thing is to keep your eye on the ball with this three-step process, okay? So the first step is you want to set up the hand history and choose the mode. So here this hand history is set up. You would choose and make sure that you have the correct structure input. In this case, that's going to be the $5 90 man, 9 max turbo, and the also the, the mode, okay? So here we have ICM dollar EV price pool, which we're recommending. Make sure you have the mode that you want, and that's going to be the first step. The next one is to put in the player actions. So let's say, for example, that we were actually the button in this hand, and we make it so that the actions are correct, and we can also modify the ranges. So we saw how to do that here. We would right click and we can put in a locked range for this player. Left click here to get the best response range if we want to do that. And so we're always going to end up with the optimal range for making our shove fold decisions. And then the third step is don't make mistakes anymore. IC Monster 3 offers a free seven day trial. So you can create a free account right now, download ICMizer 3, and begin your free trial. Thanks very much for watching this ICMizer 3 tutorial video.